So now we're in the dreaded step four, and we have the classical and the p-value approaches available to us. The question is, which one are we going to do? Well, we'll do both. So let's start with the classical method, shall we? So the classical method, we're going to need to find the chi alpha squared statistic, which is the critical value. Now notice these are always right-tailed tests, so you, you will always need is your alpha make 0 0.05, and then your critical value, let's do it this way. Step four, critical value will be equal to chi, all right, hold on, let me make this bigger. Okay, so there's kind of a difference between Excel 2010 and, and earlier versions. So for me, it'd be chi squared dot inverse dot RT, right? All right, so let's see if this works. 0 0.05 comma degrees of freedom would be equal to the count of these values. Oopsie. You can take any of them. It doesn't really matter. Count of these take away one. Okay. All right. So let me just show you what I just did. Count would be equal to in the mirror n is equal to count of these, right? So it's just showing you how many categories you had. That's it. So when I did the degrees of freedom, you could also, you could say count of those values minus one, or you could just say 12 minus one. You could just type 11 if you wanted, you know, whatever. Okay, so that's the critical value. Now, what if you are with old Excel? All right, old Excel is a little bit harder to work with. Let me see if I can remember how to do it. So it's equal to chi inv, chi inverse. Let's see what that said. Right tailed probability, inverse of the right tailed probability. So if I type 0 0.05 comma 12 take away one, let's see what we get. Oh, there we go, same one. Cool. So that's your right. That's because it's it's a right tail test. It's right, not your right. It's it's right. So because it's a right tail test, it's actually pretty easy both directions. So there's the old function chi inverse and new function chi square dot inverse chi sq dot inv dot rt because it's right tailed. And these are always right tailed, no matter what. Okay. So there's our chi alpha value. Let me go back to here. So our chi alpha value is equal to 19 point, oops, what was it? 19.675. That's our critical value. And it was with 11. 12 take away one equals 11 degrees of freedom. All right, so then that's the value right here. This is 19.675 right here, the chi alpha. So then the 13 that we came up with earlier is not far enough away. So we do not reject H naught because our, crit our test statistic, which is 13.57, oops, what is it? equals 13.574 is less than our chi alpha, which was equal to 19.675. So we do not re get to reject the null hypothesis. Cool. Okay. So that's the classical method. What about the p-value method? Okay. So let me go back here. Oh, if we do step four this way, the p-value way, and I can say it over here, right? Do not reject it, do not, do not reject, do not, because 13.574 is less than 19.675. These are always going to be right-tailed tests. You're always going to be interested in whether it's greater than or less than. Now to find the p-value, we will use equal chi sq dot dist dot rt, right? Because it's right-tailed always. And it's that test statistic, 13.57, blah, comma, degrees of freedom, which is 12, take away one. There we go. So it's 0.2575. All right, I'll be right back in the next video to show you how to do it with the old Excel and with StatCrunch.